Hi, my name is Mohan Shyam and this is my first video on UVM. In this video, I will discuss about UVM test bench architecture. The architecture which I am going to discuss here is a very simple test bench architecture. I am excluding some components here just to reduce the complexity, but later I will explain those components also. Test bench architecture, I will just give you a brief idea about what is UVM. So, UVM is stand for Universal Verification Methodology and uh, which has derived from OVM. So, simply we can say UVM is a system file of framework from which a fully functional test bench can be built. So, UVM is just a hierarchy of system dialog classes that make use of inheritance and have well defined inbuilt functions and tasks. So if we will uh, say it simply like uh, it consists just a pack of base classes with predefined methods. So UVM is just a pack of system dialog classes that make use of inheritance and uh, with the predefined method, so it will make our work very easy. So UVM has already defined the base classes to create UVM test bench component and we just have to inherit our component from the base classes and uh, follow the UVM pipeline. Except this, UVM gives some powerful concept like UVM faces, UVM factory, and TLM, which will make our work more easy. UVM also gives the concept of reusability. So these are some basic points about UVM. So now let's move to our topic, UVM test bench architecture. This is the UVM test bench architecture. So in this architecture, the topmost module is TB top. So it's as if the module, so it's static in nature. So now I'll tell you what we will do inside the TB top. So the first and important thing is reset and clock generation. So the reset and clock generation will be done inside this TB top only. After that, we will instantiate our DOT or RTL wrapper inside this TB top. We instantiate all of the interfaces as you can see here in the orange color. Uh, this is our interface. So we will instantiate our interfaces here. Then we make connection between this uh, duty ports or RTL port, duty ports and uh, this uh, interface. So we will make the connection between duty ports and this interface. Then we will set the configuration from this uh, TV top. If we want to configure our environment, our test, we will just configure it from the TV top. So for this configuration, UVM gives us a very a good concept that's the UVM config DB. So we will use uh, the UVM config DB to configure our environment. We can set uh, this interface here. As you know, after TV talk, the rest of the environment is dynamic. All the classes will be there. So the actual interface will not work over there. So we have to set this interface and we will set this interface from this TV top only. So, with DOT, we also instantiate the test over here and we will also call the test from the TV top only. So, there is a method, there is an inbuilt method inside UVM that is run underscore test, so we will call that run underscore test from the TV top. So this run underscore test will just create the base test and call it also. 
So the run under two test will create the base test and start the run. And it will run the base test also. So finally we can say uh, in DB top we will instantiate the DUT interfaces and we will instantiate the test. So now let's come to the other DB component. As I already told you that this uh, DB top is a static in nature as it's a module. And uh, the rest of the thing are dynamic in nature as uh, rest of the other thing are classes so rest of the things are dynamic in nature so what are the other db components so first there is there is a test then inside that we have sequences and environment inside environment we have agent there can be multiple agents and we have score board also and the inside agent we have sequencer, driver and monitor. So these are some TV component. I'll just show you on the next slide so you can come to know. So these are all the test range component. We have test, then environment, agent, we have sequence item, sequence, sequencer, driver, monitor and scoreboard. So let's come to the first TV component that is that is our test. So as you can see inside test we have two components or we have two things. First one is a sequence and another one is environment. So we will create two things inside that, that those are sequences and environment. So, test is a component which will generate the stimulus. And which is used to verify the design. So how the test will generate the stimulus? test will generate these sequences and sequences sequences are just a set of sequence items sequence item is nothing but just like a transaction or we can say that data items we, the inputs which we are driving to the design so those are defined or those are declared inside a sequence item with a rand keyword. So the sequence will generate those sequence items. Okay, and the test will generate the sequence. Test will generate multiple sequences. So sequences will just a set of sequence items. Or we can say that as stimulus. So test will generate the stimulus by generating sequences. And the second thing, test will uh, inside test will create this environment also. Now what the test will do of these sequences? So we have a predefined method. So with the help of that method, that is a start method. So Inside test, we will just start this sequence on this sequencer, which is inside agent. You can see the S here. So inside test, we will just start these sequences on this sequencer. So there are some more points about this UPM test. I'll just go to those on those points. About TV top, I have already uh, explained these things to you. Like uh, in UBM test bench, we instantiate the DUT and we create the UBM test also and then configure the test bench component. I have already explained this thing to you guys. So now I'll come to the test. So the UBM test is the top level UBM component in the 
UV and test bench. As I told you, TV top is a uh, static, static uh, in nature, but uh, test is dynamic in nature. So test is the top component, or you can say uh, the top class. And after that, the UVM test performs three main functions. I have already told you these functions also. So first thing, instantiate the top level environment. As I told you, uh, inside the test, we create or we instantiate the environment. Second thing, it configures the environment. Obviously, we will take the configuration from DB top and uh, then it will do some, uh, it will uh, create its internal architecture on, on the basis of those uh, configuration and then set the configuration for child classes or like uh, sub components. After that, the test will apply stimulus by invoking UVM sequences through the environment to the DUT. So I have also told you this thing as UVM test will create the UVM sequences and drive it to the sequencer or uh, it will just start the sequences on the UVM sequencer which is inside the UVM environment and then inside the agent. So these are some things and these are some points about the UVM test. Now I uh, go back to the architecture. So after after test, we have the environment class, UVM environment, ENV. So environment instantiates a reusable verification component like agents, code boards, monitors, etc. So if you will see, this is our environment. And inside the environment, we are creating the agent. Agent can be multiple, like uh, you can see two agents over here. And we will create the code board here. Then we will connect these monitor and code board also. Just a second. And we will make connections between monitor and code board here. So this is our environment class and we will also configure uh, the agents whether these agents would be active or passive I will just tell you what are these. So as I told you we will set configuration from the test. So we will get those configuration in the ENP, ENP class and uh, then on the basis of those configuration, it will just make its internal architecture and uh, then set the configuration for subclasses like agents and cobalt. And there can be some knobs in the environment or in the class which, it, uh, which uh, can be used to just disable or enable any subcomponent. And uh, Inside DNB, we will configure our agents or our subcomponents. This is all about uh, the environment. Now I'll come to my next point or next component. That is our agent, UVM agent. So the first thing I want to tell you about uh, this UVM agent. It can be of two types, whether it can be uh, an active agent or it can be a passive agent. So how can we determine whether it's an active agent or it's a, a passive agent? So if uh, the agent contains sequencer or driver, then it's an active agent as if it contains sequencer and driver, so driver will just drive the stimulus to the interfaces or it will try the um, stimulus uh, to DUT by using interface. So if it will drive something to the DUT, then, it, then it's an active agent. If it's not driving anything, it's just monitoring 
the signals of the interface and it's an passive agent. As you can see here in this first diagram here, sequence driver and monitor are used. So the driver is just driving the data to the interfaces and with the help of interfaces, the stimulus is going to the TUD. But in the second diagram, you can see the sequence and driver are uh, just a second. Sequence and driver are not used in this case. Only monitor is available inside this agent. So it's not driving anything to the interface or to the DOD. It's just monitoring the signals of the interface. So it's not an active agent here. So it's an it's a passive agent and if I will see the first agent, it's an active agent. Except this thing UVM agent is a radical component that groups together other verification components that are dealing with DUT like sequencer, driver, and monitor. And it gets the configuration from the ENP and decide whether it's an active or passive agent. There is a particular enum for this is underscore active. So if inside ENB we will set is underscore active as UVM active, then we will compare this with UVM active and we will create the sequence and driver also inside the event. But if we will find from environment is active is configured as UVM passive, then we will create uh, the agent as a passive agent and uh, we will just create monitor inside it. We will not create sequencer and drive inside it, driver inside it. So as I already told you, inside agent, we can have sequencer, driver, and monitor or only monitor. And we can, we will also make connections between uh, the uh, sequencer and driver over here. So I told you previously inside test we will, we will just create the sequences and we will start the sequences on this sequencer. So now after that what will happen? What will the sequencer will do of that stimulus? I'll just explain on this thing over here. But before going to the sequencer, I'll just uh, want to tell you some points uh, regarding agent. So just a second. So I'll just repeat these uh, words about uh, these things about the UVM agent. So UVM agent includes a uh, UVM sequencer. UVM driver and UVM monitor. I have already told you these things. The next thing is, the next point is, the UVM agent might include other components like coverage collector, protocol checker, etc. These can be written inside the UVM agent. The UVM agent operate both in an active mode and in passive mode. I have already told you how we will decide whether a particular agent is active or it's passive. So let's come back to our uh, just test one architecture. So now I'm just coming to my next UVM component that is sequencer. So as we discussed, uh, inside test we will start a sequence on sequencer. So the stimulus is present inside the sequencer. Uh, so what what is the responsibility of the sequencer now? So sequencer plays a very important role here. So it is used to control the stimulus flow between sequence and driver. So it's just a mediator between the sequence and driver. So whenever the driver will request for data, then sequencer will send the data to driver or stimulus to the driver. So it just controls the flow of, uh, we can say the transaction or we can say the UVM sequence item or we can say it will just control the flow of the stimulus 
with the help of predefined methods there are some predefined methods or we can say the uh, there is a particular communication between sequencer and driver i'll uh, tell you that communication um, later i'm not going to discuss all the methods over here i'm just uh, going to give you a simple uh, simple uh, like i'm just going to give you a brief overview of this thing so sequencer has a sequence item export okay which is uh, a part of dlm so with the help of sequence item export sequencer will communicate to the driver so driver uh, okay i'll just come to later on driver so i but i want to tell you one thing how the sequencer and driver communicate there is a dlm transaction level module we have a TLM and with the help of TLM the sequencer and driver will communicate. As I told you, the sequencer has a sequence item export. I'm just going to a particular slide. Wait a moment. Yes. So let this is our sequencer, this is our driver, and these are connected or these these will communicate with each other with the help of TLM. And there are some interfaces or ports are there which are inbuilt inside the UVM. So sequencer has a pre-built port that is pre-built pre interface that is sequence item export and driver has sequence item port. And we will connect these port and export with the help of connect method and we will connect these things inside the agent. So, okay. So this is the way how sequencer and driver will communicate. So I'm just coming back to the S-Bench architecture. So uh, now uh, the picture is quite clear to you. The sequencer has a sequence item export and driver has a sequence item port and there is a proper connection between sequencer and driver which we will make inside this agent. So now, now uh, this is the actual role of the sequencer. It will just control the flow whenever driver needs the data, it will just uh, transfer the data to the driver. Now I am just coming uh, to the driver. But before that, I just want to tell you some more uh, more points about the sequencer. So, so the UVM sequencer serves as an arbiter for controlling transaction or stimulus flow from multiple stimulus sequences. So there can be multiple sequences, and who will control the flow of these sequences? The person is sequencer. And a UVM sequencer controls the flow of UVM sequence item or transaction generated by one or more UVM sequences. And these are the same thing uh, which I want to say. So now I am just coming to the driver. So as I told you, driver has a sequence item port of TLM. And uh, there are some predefined methods are there, like uh, get item or get next item. So whenever the, uh, we will call that get next item inside driver, so it will just uh, uh, request the sequencer to send me the data. So it will just get uh, the stimulus from the sequencer. But still, the data or stimulus is available in in the form of transaction. So now what the driver will do? The first thing that driver uh, does is that it will just convert the transaction label data into the pin label data. And when it will convert the transaction label data to pin label data, after that it will drive that pin label data to the interface. As uh, I told you, uh, we will set uh, 
the configurations from TB top we will set many things from TB top we will set we will set the actual interface from the TB top okay and we will get the that interface here over here but uh, now it will be of virtual type as uh, all these are classes so inside uh, driver we will get the virtual interface and we will connect the virtual interface with the actual interface so it will just uh, drive uh, that uh, it will just drive the stimulus to interface and by interface it will go to the DOD so driver uh, the most important thing uh, is the driver so the work is very easy it will just get the transaction level data convert it into pin pickle or uh, pin level data and then transfer or that it that pin pickle data to the interface so now i'll come to this monitor part the monitor will just do exactly reverse of the due uh, reverse of the driver how it will do the reverse it will just take the data from the interface and uh, the data that it will uh, monitors it will be in the pin pickle form or signal level so first it will convert it into the transaction level and then it will broadcast it it will broadcast it with the help of analysis port tlm analysis port actually i'm not uh, this is not the symbol of the analysis port i'm just uh, uh, showing that from monitor the data will go to the scoreboard the uh, uh, coverage collector there can be one more monitor inside we are writing checkers other things and all so uh, this is the basic of uh, functionality of monitor so monitor will just do reverse of the driver it will just take the signal level data and convert it into transaction level and then just broadcast with the help of tlm analysis port now i'll just uh, repeat the whole thing so i i am starting from the test the test will start the test will create the sequences and start the sequences on the sequencer the sequencer is communicating with the driver with the help of tlm and the driver is is converting the transaction level data into the pin pickles and uh, just transferring the data on this interface so here you can see there are two agents but this one is uh, at in my case this one is a write agent and this one is a write read agent so this is write uh, this is a write monitor and uh, this one is in second agent this one is a read monitor so i have declared some more ports for that uh, from which i am controlling this thing so as this uh, driver will drive the input or stimulus to uh, this interface this monitor will read this stimulus only this uh, input only okay and uh, it will read this input and just broadcast it and uh, scoreboard will cat or will implement there is one write method which is used uh, to receive the data in case of tlm analysis port so with the help of that write method this code board will get the data which driver is driving to the interface okay so now code board will get will also get the stimulus the stimulus which driver has driven on the interface it will uh, as this this is a virtual interface till here so this virtual interface is connected with the actual interface so and actual interface is connected to the dot so this stimulus will go to the dot and on the basis of this stimulus the dot will generate some output values and it is a read monitor will analysis or will monitor those output signal and it will uh, just read those uh, outputs and it uh, this monitor also 
uh, do the same thing. It will broadcast these output values and scoreboard will just receive those output values. Now, what is the functionality of the scoreboard? Scoreboard just uh, receives this actual data, actual output data from this read monitor and it uh, also receives the, ex, uh, the stimulus, the input. So there is a reference model inside a monitor. Okay, so the input which this uh, right monitor will provide to the scoreboard, this input will go to that reference model and it will just generate the expected output. Then scoreboard will compare this expected output and the actual output. So if the actual output and the expected output are same, it means the the duty is function functioning properly. But if it will uh, not, if the expected and actual data is not same, then there may be some issue in our DB, uh, uh, in our uh, means uh, in our verification environment, or uh, we we have to see that actually. It can be the issue of but RTL, there, there may be some bugs inside the RTL, so we have to fix that. So this is a basic uh, UVM test bench, uh, which I explained till yet. So actually it's not standard, there are some points which I have to work, so in my next video I'll just focus on those points.